And now I'm going to present another uh, work done by uh, Tommaso Gorni, myself in collaboration uh, with Tommaso and with Stefano Baroni. And this work is about uh, modeling magnons, magnetic excitations within time-dependent density functional perturbation theory. So uh, this presentation was prepared by Tommaso. This is his PhD thesis. But unfortunately, he couldn't come because uh, he just moved to Paris to start his postdoc. So I'm just going to talk about this project. OK. So uh, in TDDFT, we can model, with TDDFT, we can model different spectroscopies. We can model, uh, depending on the, on the perturbation, we can um, uh, compute different response. So if we perturb system by uh, the beam of electrons or beam of neutrons or of photons, we can measure different response. For example, we can uh, study optical absorption spectroscopy, electron energy loss spectroscopy, inelastic X-ray scattering, inelastic neutron scattering, and spin polarized electron energy loss spectroscopy. And we, we, we can uh, obtain our spectra. Uh, and in this talk, I'm going to concentrate about magnetic excitations, these last two spectroscopies. What is the motivation to study magnons? So magnons uh, are in different, appear in different places. For example, uh, they contribute to the specific heat. Uh, they may provide the coupling mechanism for, for high temperature superconductivity. Uh, uh, circuits of magnetic materials, because spin waves can be used for uh, carrier information. information. Magnons can influence uh, speed of the reading and writing of information in spintronic devices. And uh, finally, the first principle description of magnetic excitations for complex materials is still uh, a challenge. For, for simple systems like bulk iron, bulk nickel, OK, there are methods. But if you try to study some very, really complex systems like surfaces with spin or coupling, it really becomes a challenge. So we would like to have a new method which we can try to address those, issues, those problems. So the current state uh, of the TDDFPT module in Quantum Espresso is that there are two codes, Turbo TDDFT for optical absorption spectroscopy and Turbo EELS for electron energy loss and inelastic X-ray scattering spectroscopy. So in optical absorption spectroscopy with Turbo TDDFT, currently we can study finite systems like molecules. Also, there is implementation for extended systems, but it's not uh, tested. It seems working, but not tested. Then the, uh, we can study only spin unpolarized systems with normal conserving and ultra soft pseudo potentials, also with hybrids, but only normal conserving pseudo potentials. Uh, as in many places of uh, quantum espresso, in all linear response codes, we don't use uh, empty, empty states. And then there are two flavors, how to solve uh, the uh, re linear response quantum equations. There is the Lanchos algorithm, iterative, and the Davidson solver, which basically diagonalizes the Liouvillian. Then in turbo yields, we can model plasmons which are the collective excitations of electrons and single particle excitations. Currently, the code can be used for extended systems for in, uh, in a spin on polarized and non-collinear case with normal conserving and ultra soft pseudo potentials. Uh, it's actually a, 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 mis a mistake here because hybrids are not supported. There have been, uh, I have been working on this project, but it's not yet uh, finished. Then, uh, as again, we don't have empty states, and uh, uh, we can use the Lanchos approach. So we want to study magnons, and this project has started from uh, the code Turbo Eels code for electron energy loss spectroscopy. So let, let me describe briefly the, our, this, our starting point. So this is the two coupled linear response quantum equations. They are complex. Basically, on the right, we have uh, our perturbation, where V is the external potential. In, in this case, in Eel's case, uh, there is an electron which is inelastically scattered from 
from the sample. So this is the incoming electron inelastically scattered. And there is a transfer of momentum. This is the momentum transfer and the transfer of energy. And so we model the perturbation. Uh, the, the electron, free electron, is a, is a plane wave. So essentially, we put here a plane wave. And then we solve self-consistently and iteratively this, uh, th this system of two equations. Essentially, it's actually a system of many equations. And this is the interaction part, which is the heart and exchange correlating response potentials. These two equations can be equivalently mapped onto the quantum Liouville equation, where here uh, L is the Liouvillean superoperator, rho prime is the response density matrix. This is the external potential, and this is the ground state <laughs> density matrix. And the Liouvillean is defined, the action of the Liouvillean is defined as two terms, the two commutators. The first commutator is the, for the ground state Hamiltonian with the response density matrix, and the second one, the interaction term. By doing so, we can define the charge density susceptibility, which is the density, density response function, essentially as a trace of, of this expression where n is the operator of the density here and here, and this is the inverse of the resolvent of the Liouvillean. So essentially, we can see that we have density on the left and on the right. So we compute really a density-density response. In this, way, in this uh, theory, we can use the time reversal symmetry, which simplifies a lot everything. Due to the time reversal symmetry, we can uh, use the Lanchus algorithm with real uh, arithmetics. And we can also perform a rotation of batches. I don't go into the descriptions what are the batches, but we can talk uh, during the coffee break. So we can rotate our equations and gain a factor of two. Okay, so far so good. Now we want to study magnons. To study magnons, we need a magnetic field. If there is a magnetic field, there is no time reversal symmetry. This means that we have many complications. <coughs> So first of all, uh, we change our perturbation. Now it's no longer a, just a plane wave. Now it's a, a magnetic, external magnetic field. Then we also generalize these equations to the magnetic case. Now we don't have only the charge density. We have also the magnetization density. We have not only the exchange correlation, heart exchange correlation potential, potential, we have also the magnetic exchange correlation potential. Now our equations are uh, Pauli type in real equations, not, not just simply scalar conjugate wave functions. Due to the lack of the time reversal symmetry, now we have to generalize the Lanchus algorithm to complex algebra. And again, no time reversal symmetry means that we have to use conjugate wave functions at uh, many more points, like k, k plus q, k minus q, etc. So this is again a, a complication. In this way, we can uh, compute the magnetic de uh, magnetization density susceptibility, which is the magnetization, magnetization response function, chi of alpha and beta. Alpha and beta are Cartesian uh, indices. And the expression for the response function is similar as in the Eels case, but now we have here not charge, the charge densities, but magnetization densities. But we can also compute the mixed terms, like charge density, magnetization density, and vice versa. But in this case, let me just talk about magnetization density susceptibility. And just by plotting this uh, chi function, we can see peaks in the spectra. And some peaks are magnons, some peak, other peaks are stoner, uh, stoner peaks, which are the single spin flips. Very briefly, so as I said, some, this is more technic technical slide. So in, in practice, we have to generalize the algorithm, uh, Lanchus algorithm, to complex algebra. So uh, just before describing these equations, let me say that the response wave function chi is actually a, is a four by four matrix, where the head is actually the charge tar charge response function, like in the yield case, and the, this three by three matrix uh, is the uh, magnetization magnetization part. And these wings are mixed terms. Now, uh, we start with the initialization. We have to uh, define so-called Q1 and P1 
vectors, which we can also label, uh, they are equal in the beginning. Let's label them as V, and let us define some vector U. So V is our perturbation. Maybe you can uh, recog uh, recognize it from the previous slides. This is our right-hand right, right -hand side part of the equations. Essentially, this is the perturbing potential, uh, magnetic field. And the U vector, this is an another quantity where the O operator is, can be any uh, operator, can be charge density operator, magnetization density operator. So in our case, let us consider magnetization density operator because we want to compute the response of the magnetization. And now let us come back again to this structure of the chi matrix. So uh, with one Lanchus chain, we can compute, let's say we, we fix the magnetic field along y direction. And by one Lanchus calculation, we can compute one column of the chi matrix. So this V corresponds to the column. And U corresponds to the, uh, to the rows. Okay, once we did the initialization, uh, we have to iteratively solve uh, our equations. I don't go into the details, but here essentially we have beta and gamma Lanchus coefficients, which are complex. So this is new with respect to what is now in quantum espresso, where we have real numbers. So Tommaso generalized this algorithm to call complex algebra. The final step is the post-processing, which is very fast and essentially requires uh, the computation, uh, simple algebra operations, takes seconds. Let me highlight a few things. Uh, here, there is an action of the Liouville operator on the uh, vector Q, which basically consists of two operations. One is the application of the ground state Hamiltonian to the orbitals. Essentially, this is application of the H psi routine, using of the H psi routine. And the second term is the interaction term, when, where we compute twice uh, the response uh, exchange correlation and heart rate potentials. So this is essentially the bottleneck in the calculation. And in the final post-processing part, as I said, this is uh, completely inexpensive. Uh, one slide of uh, validation. So Tommaso tested this, his implementation uh, by computing the magnetic susceptibility of uh, bulk iron. So on the top two figures, we can see the convergence of the magnon peak position with respect to the, uh, uh, so on the horizontal axis is the energy or transferred, uh, transferred energy and the vertical is the intensity, let's say in arbitrary units. So let's say, let's say, uh, take this value of the Q vector. At 1,000 iterations, we have a magnum peak at 200 milli electron volts. Then we continue doing iterations to 4,000. It moves a lot from 200 to, let's say, 45, no, 40 milli electron volts. We continue more and, and we converge it. And this is for another value of the Q parameter. And on the bottom panels, we highlight uh, the convergence of the magnum peak position with respect to the number of iterations. We see that it's monotonically converges to some true value. Uh, so current implementation, we can see that in the current implementation, we really need to do a lot of launches calculations, like to 10,000, even more. So this is, and also there is a, another issue, which is the, with the K points, uh, the method is, is, is very heavy. Really, uh, we have to go to very dense K points grids, like almost 30 by 30 by 30 and even higher. And the method is really, current implementation is really uh, heavy and, and slow. But we are working on the speed up. We're working on different uh, ways how we can speed up. And the work is in progress. I'm uh, finishing almost, there are a couple of last slides. So this uh, code is implemented in, in the development version of Quantum Espresso in 5.3, and Tommaso is going to port it to the latest version. Uh, then the, there are several uh, new routines in the TDDFPT folder, like uh, of the order of 10 Fortran codes. Then there are other co uh, routines are modified. 
as, yeah, as uh, Thomas highlights, many routines are just small modifications, maybe some even big modifications of ILS code. Then uh, in LR models, also there is this common routine for the response density, which is also modified a bit. Then in the current implementation, Tomaso writes the time reversed Conchem orbitals to the disk. And current implementation uh, supports the parallelization over G vectors and K points. What are the features of the current implementation? So we use the Liouville Lanchos approach. Uh, the current implementation supports non collinear case, including spin orbit interaction, no empty states as everywhere in linear response of quantum espresso. The code can be used for extended systems, but also in principle it can be used for finite systems, but it requires some testing and uh, benchmarking. Only norm conserving pseudo potentials, the generalization to ultra soft is a hard uh, thing and has to be done. Hybrids are not yet supported. Yeah, so in the near future, uh, we would like to port it to the latest version and uh, yeah. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>